Hello and welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson. It is tax time and that often means quite a bit of stress, no matter what your income level. For those who are barely making ends meet, it's especially important to eliminate the possibility of overpaying on taxes or tax preparation. Here to talk about a free service to get those tax returns completed is Cara Williams. Cara is the Director of Finance for Reinvestment Partners. Welcome, Cara, and thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Cara, Reinvestment Partners help to provide um, volunteer income tax assistance sites, right? Also mm -hmm. known as VITA sites. Yes. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about your organization and what it is you do as a VITA site? Yeah, well, Reinvestment Partners is a nonprofit organization and we help to protect and promote community wealth. Um, our VITA site serves about a thousand clients a year, mm -hmm. um, helping them with tax questions and preparing their income tax returns for free. Okay. Well, how do VITA sites actually help? Uh, well, they provide this service to anyone whose uh, household income is less than $51,000 a year. Mm -hmm. um, the IRS certifies the people that are preparing the taxes. They are, are trained by the IRS and tested by them. Tell us about who is actually eligible to get this kind of help with filing their tax returns and where are the VITA sites usually located? Well, VITA sites are usually located um, within community organizations. There are some within um, the law programs at North Carolina Central and at Duke University. Our VITA site is located at Northgate Mall. Um, traditionally, it's been at City Hall, at Durham County Social Services, and at Durham Public Schools Staff Development Center. Mm -hmm. Now, what does your income level have to be? Uh, 51000 or less. It was fifty last year. Each year, it inches up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, this year is $51,000 or less. How is that determined? Uh, it's household income. Um, so it's your gross income for the household. Okay. Now, I know your um, VITA site at Northgate recently opened. Mm -hmm. And tell our viewers a little bit about this site. Well, this site uh, we're very proud of. It's more of a commercial location. Um, our goal was to provide this service on a level competitive with any paid preparer that you might go to. So we're very fortunate to get the space at Northgate Mall. The mall is uh, central to Durham, mm -hmm. related by folks that are fall in our income bracket. And so we're right there where folks already are. So it's very good location for us this that year. That is great. That's good. Now, let's talk again about who is eligible and what sort of information they need to bring with them when they want to get their taxes done. We do different levels of tax prep, but basically, as long as you don't have a business where you have employees that you have to pay, mm -hmm. um, if it's just W-2 income and that's from a, a job, a wage earner, or 1099 income, um, if you've made less than $51,000 or less, um, you actually don't have to be a U.S. citizen. We do prepare taxes for foreign nationals who fall in that bracket as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, just basically not have very complicated um, returns that, that are very involved, we can serve you right there at the VITA site. Okay, and what kind of information should they bring with them? Um, anyone coming into a VITA site needs to have a valid Social Security number or I-10. Mm -hmm. They need to have a photo ID, a valid state-issued ID for um, the primaries on the tax return. Mm -hmm. And that Social Security number in I-10 we have to have for each person that's going to be listed on the return. Okay. And then they just need to bring in their tax documents, W-2s, 1099s, 1098s, any uh, tax information document that they received in January. Okay, and what if they uh, have children and mm -hmm. uh, they want to get some kind of refund or credit for child care? Well, there are um, some credits particular to families with children. Earned income credit, um, which you can get if you don't have children, but the credit is much less. And mm -hmm. the child tax credit, we make sure when we do those tax returns that we are um, getting our tax filers every credit that they are eligible for mm -hmm. so that they don't miss anything. Each year, hundreds of thousands of dollars of earned income credit are left on the table just because people simply don't claim it at tax time. Uh -huh. So we ensure that those credits are claimed those, uh, if you're eligible for mm -hmm. them. So if they do, though, have a child care provider, do they need to bring any uh, verification information about that? Yes, we require the taxpayer ID number of the provider. Um, any daycare institution that you go to um, for daycare will issue you a statement that has their taxpayer ID number on it. Mm -hmm. And I think some people don't realize that if an individual provides child care services, they can use that individual Social Security number and the amount that they paid and still claim those dependent care credits on their tax return. Wow, that's important information to have. Mm -hmm. I can imagine a lot of people who just do their taxes don't even think about that. Right. I think the Take only person deduction. you can't use is one of your other kids. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's important to know for sure. Yes. So on average, then, what kind of savings can people expect if they get their 
tax returns well, prepared at a VITA site? The average um, tax prep fee is anywhere from $100 to $300. Mm -hmm. So that's a savings right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And then we also, mm -hmm. once they're in our site, encourage them to think about putting some of their refund in their savings as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I know another service that you offer is called the Ready, Set, Save initiative. Talk yes. a little bit about that. Well, the CFPB, which is the newly formed Consumer Financial Protections Bureau, has a, a, a mandate through the Dodd-Frank bill to offer education and assistance around savings. One of the easiest ways to do that is at tax time. Mm -hmm. Folks are going to be getting a lump sum um, refund, and to encourage them at that time to think about putting some of that money away and not touching in their savings account um, is what they're trying to do. So they've mm -hmm. been sending out information all across Durham. They picked three sites across the country to focus on, and our VITA site is one of them. But as a result of us being chosen, all the uh, VITA sites across Durham are benefiting from the information that they're pouring into the community about savings. Uh -huh. And so as folks come in to get their taxes done, we're just kind of refreshing that message, reiterating it about savings while they're there in the site. And we have the ability to split their refund and put some of that money in their savings account and some in their checking account. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, do people have to call ahead for an appointment? They can. In? Some of our VITA sites are um, walk-in sites. Um, our VITA site runs as an appointment and walk-in sites. So mm -hmm. we primarily serve appointments, but we also help folks that just walk in. We just serve our appointments first. So it's best to make an appointment. Okay. Now, if someone wants to visit the site for help, how do they go about doing that? Um, there are several ways. There's information on our website, which is uh, nc-tac.com. Mm -hmm. They can also call in. Uh, the number is 919-286-1822, which is 1-TAC. Okay. Um, we can assist them on the phone to help them set up an appointment. They can walk in and make an appointment, or they can actually log on to the website and make an appointment there. Cool. And they can make an appointment for our site, the one at North Carolina Central, or Duke's Freeman Center from that same spot. Great, great. Now you have shared a lot of important information today. If our viewers remember nothing else about VITA sites and getting their tax preparation done, mm -hmm. what is it they should remember? That they don't have to pay for this service. It is a valuable service that the IRS offers for free. And they can go call that number and find out information about, uh, they actually go to the IRS website and get information on VITA sites anywhere in the country. All right. Cara, thank you so much for joining All right, me. Thank you. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break now. But when we come back, we're going to take a look at why you should get involved in city government by volunteering on a board, committee, or commission. We'll be right back. Welcome back to City Life. Have you ever thought about serving our city by volunteering on one of our many boards, committees, or commissions? Joining me now to talk about this important service to our community and why you should get involved is Laverne Brooks and DeWarren Langley. Laverne is with the Office of the City Clerk, which recruits for the boards and committees and commissions, and DeWarren is chairman of the Citizens Advisory Committee. Welcome Laverne and DeWarren. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. All right. Laverne, let's talk a little bit about what your office does. I know you publicize the vacancies and actually recruit for these positions on the various boards and committees and commissions. How many boards are actually available to um, residents and what kinds of issues do they typically oversee? Well, thank you for having me, Beverly. I'm glad to be here. We currently have 25 boards that citizens can participate on. Uh -huh. And they range from various issues like um, ending homelessness, issues like the transportation system, improving this transportation system, dealing with recreation issues, improving mm -hmm. our recreation areas, mm -hmm. and then performing arts. Okay. If you, yeah, issues dealing with the performing arts center. So, so they're pretty broad. Various, huh? very broad, uh -huh. yes. So what is the role of the boards towards setting policy or making mm -hmm. recommendations to city council? And basically, how important are they to the role of government? Well, it's very important. These boards are, are very important to the city because it's like it gives citizens a chance to actually give advice and recommendations to the city council mm -hmm. and to the city manager. Uh -huh. And so um, it's sort of like looking at it as citizens can partner 
to, to make Durham really a great place to work, live, and play. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's very important. You know, and a lot of people don't realize how vital yeah. this role is and right. that they can even get involved. That's right. So this is a great uh, way for them to Absolutely. show their community spirit and Absolutely. actually support our government. Duarn, I know you serve as chairman of one of those boards, and you served on two other boards recently, or, yeah. or you still do, actually. Yes. Yeah. Now, what motivated you, actually, to become involved in this manner? Um, as a long, lifelong resident of Durham, I think we all have a responsibility and making our city the greatest place possible to live, work, and play. Mm -hmm. And we do that by participating, whether we're volunteering or serving on one of the many boards, commissions, and committees of the city of Durham. Mm -hmm. And I feel as if, um, as, as a resident, it's very important to positively contribute to the growth and development of the community. Is it a, a large investment of your time? I mean, does it take a lot of time to play this role? I think about four to five hours a month is about the amount of time that it takes to really participate and, mm -hmm. and really uh, get involved in one of these commissions. Mm -hmm. And uh, that includes any kind of research that you, that you have to do or is it just participating in the meetings? Um, as chair, my responsibility is to work with the Department, the com department of Community Development mm -hmm. to develop our agenda as well as communicate that information to the members of the Citizens Advisory Committee. Okay. And the committee works with the Department of Community Development on issues of affordable housing and community development. We also help with the entitlement money that the city receives through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Each mm -hmm. year the city receives community development block grant funding, emergency solutions grant funding, and home investment partnership funding, and we review the applications that the city receives and make annual recommendations to the city council and city manager. Okay. Now, what would you say to your fellow residents who, you know, are debating whether or not they should apply for a position or even get involved? And, I mean, what would you tell them about this way of, of getting involved in city life? Participation is in these committees is not only beneficial to the city, but it's also a great way to learn a lot about how the city goes about developing policies and programs and where different funding sources come from mm -hmm. to do the great work that we see here in the city of Durham. Mm -hmm. One great example is the Southside Redevelopment Project, where we see a lot of great activity going on in the former Haytai community. And that's something that the CAC receives monthly updates on, and we actually part um, give advice on different things that are going on with the development. So it's not only just an opportunity to serve the city, it's also an opportunity to learn about different things that are going on within our community. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know a lot of people who've served on boards and uh, commissions in, uh, well, previously, they've gone on to political life. I, is this like a good primer for that or just a way to get involved? I, I think it's a great way of, of getting involved. Um, whether that public service turns into public office is something that I think a person has to evaluate for themselves. Uh -huh. And that's a question that I continue to question and, and, and ask myself is whether this will eventually lead to public office. And whether it does or does not, I continue to plan to be heavily involved in my community uh -huh. to make it the greatest city possible. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you if you were going to give us a scoop <laughs> today about <laughs> your future plans. Well, my plan is to, is to continue to be a, a, a wonderful volunteer and asset to making Durham the greatest place possible for all residents. It sounds spoken like a true politician. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks to Warren. Laverne, now that our viewers are engaged and want to get involved, how do they go about doing that? Okay, well, they need to fill out an application uh -huh. and submit it to the city clerk's office. And um, the only thing that uh, I would say is that the application is active only at the time of a vacancy. Okay. Um, but um, that's real simple. You know, a lot of people feel like, oh, it's so hard, I got to do this, got but it's that simple. Uh huh. That okay. Simple. Well, let's talk about some of the minimum criteria that right. are needed to be appointed to a board right, or a commission. Right, right. Um, basically, you need to live in the city of Durham. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, you need to have your city and county taxes have to have no delinquency on them. So okay. they got to be paid. Mm -hmm. And that's basically it. Now, um, there are some boards where they have county designated seats, uh -huh. and you can live in the county. Okay. But uh, basically, it's city residency and de no delinquent taxes. Mm -hmm. And the council actually makes the appointments yes. for most of these boards. Right. Or actually uh, correct. All of them. Okay. Correct. Yes. All right. Now, if our viewers want to learn more about the available boards or, or see mm -hmm. a listing of the boards and commissions, mm -hmm. how do they do that? Well, they need to visit our website. Okay. And they need to go to boards and committees. And then uh, there is a, a part where it says current vacancies. Mm -hmm. They need to look at that, and that'll show you what's open now. 
and then um, fill out the application can be downloaded okay. and send it into our office or they can call our office at 560-4166 okay. and uh, we'll send a copy of the vacancies. All right, great information. Thank you so much. And Thank you, Warren, you sure you don't want to give us a scoop on anything? <laughs> there are no scoops. No scoops here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so Thank much for much. spending time with Thank me today. Much. All right. Well, that does it for City Life. If you have a comment or a show idea, visit us on Facebook or Twitter and let us know what you think. Don't forget, you can also watch our programming on demand on DTV8's webpage and on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today to learn more about city life in Durham.